All right, coming in at number 18 on our organizational value rankings, the top player in Tier 5. This is the legit prospect tier. It is the K-Train, Tyler Clevin. Yep, Tyler Clevin. I mean, uh, I think his short sample size, albeit, but eight games in the NHL really raised a lot of eyebrows, not only for Ottawa Senators fans, but for scouts online scouts around the league that it was their their brand their niche to dog on tyler clevin and he really showed that hey he went took the jump from college to nhl and he did it pretty seamlessly like now mind you obviously he's playing bottom pair minutes but he still looked really good out there he didn't look out of place too often and was he playing bottom pair minutes though? Because at one point Ottawa had Shabbat, Chikrin, and Hamnick all up in the press box. No, true. That's actually a good point. I think the first couple games he was, but then he got elevated out of necessity. Uh, yeah, because he averaged over 14 minutes a night, so that's not bad at all. And I know this might be the unpopular opinion, and Ross, you can push back on this if you want, but I don't see him making the team out of camp, and that's not because I don't believe he can or don't believe in his potential. I just think it would be so beneficial for him to get a good chunk of games in the AHL so that he can harness the physicality of his game that we didn't see him play use in the NHL because he's too worried about getting out of position or getting caught out of a play trying to make a big hit. Whereas in the AHL, he can work on that timing. He can work on playing up against big, strong, professional men instead of the college game. And I think after a solid season of AHL playing – he can be ready for the NHL big time. Pilsy preaching patience. Last year, Tyler Clevin had 35 games at North Dakota with the Nodak Sens, eight goals, 10 assists for 18 points, plus two, and 84 penalty minutes because if you touch someone the wrong way or even look at them the wrong way in the NCAA, that's a 10-minute misconduct and a suspension. Uh, He did burn a year off his contract. That's noteworthy. So he has two years left at nine hundred. And seventeen thousand dollars. The K train six foot four, two hundred and one pounds. And uh the way he hits the golf ball, if you're watching Laleem's Martians Twitter, uh, sure. this guy can absolutely hammer it just like he can a puck, even though he's still looking for his first national hockey league goal. Now, Pilsy, to push back on you here, I, I'm not saying that he's guaranteed a spot. Frankly, he's on the outside looking in when yes. you when you have seven one-way contracts between JBD and Hamnick on the right side, and then his main competition is Eric Branstrom on the left side. And obviously, to say they bring different elements, <laughs> understatement of the year. But yeah. when you do look at Tyler Clevin, he's the kind of guy who's going to jump out to evaluators at training camp right away yep. based on his size. He's going to step on the ice and be like, who the heck is that kid? Obviously, well, I hope the senders manage where he knows. But even guys who are who are just watching from afar, it's like, okay, he has a presence about him, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I think that if he can show an ability to not make mistakes, like if every pass is crisp and if everything is is smooth, who would you rather have defending the, the net front in the back end, right? Like you have to ask yourself those types of questions. So if he's doing what Branny does, which is move pucks almost as well, then you have to lean Clevin because he does all these other things that Branny just physically can't do. And I think that's where that's where Clevin might have an inside track. I also think it would be hilarious if three of the Node accents just skipped Belleville. I yeah. think it would be hilarious because Pinto never played there, nor did Jake Sanderson, obviously. But uh, that would be kind of a funny aside. Like Brad Barry would need to be compensated, I think, for sending guys right to the National League. Two second round picks, even if if Clevin does come out of camp, which I would say I would say is a 35% chance, but I'm going to throw it back to you this way, Pilsy. Is there anything that Clevin could do in preseason and training camp? Like if he comes out there, how dominant would he have to be to change your mind? <laughs> this is this is the thing. I don't I don't want to frame it like I'm trying to keep Clevin down or or I I don't want him there. That I'll be honest, there's probably nothing he could do that could change my mind because I'm trying to develop my focus is on developing this guy properly because there's players that I believe can play on that bottom pair right now that can do a good enough job that there isn't a necessity to bring Tyler Clevin in. Like my, my plan would be, I'm looking at this and I like Ross, we, we heard that 
one of the main reasons, and this is funny to look back on because it's a Pierre Maguire reference, but Pierre Maguire fought to have Travis Hamnick brought in specifically to mentor Tyler Clevin. So my plan would be have Clevin have a dominant season in the AHL, raise the Calder Cup, have a long playoff run, be a top uh, pair guy. Uh, and then on the back half of Travis Hamnick's long-term extension that he signed, so the one year, uh, I would have Hamannick being the seventh defenseman and him and Clevin kind of both being on that bottom pair and Hamannick can be kind of guiding and mentoring Clevin that whole season. And then Hamannick's contract's up. He sit, sit, sets off into the sunset, sails off into the sunset. You know what I'm getting at there. Uh, and then Clevin is perfectly ready to take that spot. He takes the left side. Brandy takes the right side. You got that yin and yang. Nobody has to fight. Tyler Clevin is better than Brandy. No, Brandy's better than Clevin. They're both good, and they can play together in unison. And Sens fans can sing Kumbaya and hold hands, and there's no, there's no division there. And I think that would be perfect. Like that, for me, that is the proper way to develop Tyler Clevin. That is a roundabout way for me to answer your question. So once again, I don't think there's anything Clevin can do in my eyes that has him making this team out of camp. Never say never, Pelosi, and that's just something you did. You just said never. You said never. If he has, if he plays four preseason games, has four, <laughs> you're not done. You're not done. Okay. He has four points, has three bone crushing hits across yeah. the middle, and is plus eight. I'm gonna sit here and say, okay, Pilsy, we're gonna send him down. Okay. You have that conversation with the kid after he goes out and does that. I would I would still send him down. I know you probably think that's crazy, but I just I don't think having him playing bottom pair minutes for an entire season right off the bat would be the best for his development. I'm looking at Tyler Clevin long term here. Like you're Ross, you're you're building the K train tracks and you've got it pulling into the station already. I'm thinking past the station. I'm making multiple stops. I've got this thing going from Ottawa all the way over to the West Coast. That's how far I want the K-Track trains to run with the Ottawa Senators here. Okay, well, I'm going to Fargo with the K-Train. No Vancouver doubt. Vancouver is farther. Not, I don't want to exactly. give a geography lesson here. but He doesn't need to go to Vancouver. He needs to go home, and then he needs to come back to Ottawa. Okay, We don't have to worry about going out west with the K train. But what I can tell you is he is a long way from a do not draft that much is for okay. sure where he has developed his offensive game. He's limited the mistakes defensively, the fumbles with the puck that maybe were a bit more prevalent his freshman year at North Dakota. And I really think Brad Barry needs some serious credit for how uh, Tyler Clevin has come into his own. But if you've been listening to this show for years, Brad Schlossman told us right after the draft that mm -hmm. he's like, I do not understand the hate for Tyler Clevin. He's a perfectly legit NHL prospect, and now we're seeing him start to make his mark. If you want to learn more about the psyche of Tyler Clevin, we've had him on the show twice. One of them, my hair is absolutely absurd. COVID hair. It is absolutely <laughs> absurd. I never I never even comprehended the fact that this could one day be on YouTube. So yeah, exactly. I'm laugh about that. Don't you have the Masters playing in the background too? Or is that a different video? Jake Sanderson. In oh, okay. Yeah, we were worried about copyright there too. That was that was tough, okay? That was early days LOSB. But those interviews are available if you want to go have a laugh mm -hmm. at my expense. We also had Tyler Clevin on this Just Don't year. tell the PGA. Yes, please don't. Please don't, tell the PGA. <laughs> don't notify them, please. <laughs> now, uh, Tyler Clevin, first year right after the draft, he was 33rd on our list, Okay. Then in 2021, he was 22nd. In 2022, he was 22nd. And now he's up four spots. Tyler Clevin comes in at 18 on our organizational value rankings.